What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is dive into the differences between long division and synthetic division. Because one thing I think is really important for you to know, how to use do both forms. A lot of times when students see a quotient of two polynomials, they can just kind of favor one operation over the other. But long division is great for dividing kind of more difficult problems and synthetic division is great for speed and efficiency. So if you're really gonna get kind of the most bang for your buck with understanding division of polynomials, you really do need to know both long division and synthetic division. So let's go and take a look at this first example and then I'll do another example to also reinforce some other differences. But in this first example, let's go ahead and first do this by long division. So what I'm going to do is first is kind of set this up from long division. And if you remember back in the old, old days when we did long division with numbers, it's basically going to be the exact same process as well as algorithm. We're going to take our divisor and we're going to set that on the outside. And then we're going to kind of have this nice little long division bar. And then we're going to take everything in our numerator, our dividend, and we're going to put that underneath. Now it's time to go ahead and apply the synthetic division algorithm. And this is where students usually kind of forget what to do. They make a ton of mistakes. So what I'm going to do, if it's okay with you, is just to work with this step by step because there's so many students that I know just avoid synthetic division because it just seems too complicated for them. But once you go through this process a couple times, I can promise you that it gets easier and better each and every time. The main thing I want you to understand is when we're doing like long division with numbers, that's a little bit different than when we're dealing it with polynomials. When we're doing the polynomials, the first thing we have to make sure we have is both our divisor and our dividend in what we call descending order. So what that means is like the highest exponent is written first and then going down in descending order. That's exactly how I have everything written out. So we're good to go from there. And the reason why that's important is because when we're doing long division, I'm actually only going to be dividing one term at a time. So for my divisor, I'm only going to use the leading term, which in this case is going to be a three X to the first power. And even though I'm going to divide that three X into each and every one of these terms, I'm only going to divide it into one term at a time. And we're going to start with a six X cube. The first question we need to ask ourselves is how many times does three X evenly divide into six X? X cube. It sometimes is confusing for students and they immediately make some mistakes with simple division. So what I like to sometimes do with my students is just go ahead and, you know, go down on a separate sheet of paper or the side of paper and just rewrite it in vertical format. Basically, again, the question I'm asking is how many times does three X evenly divide into six X cubed? And hopefully when you write it like this, it kind of makes it a little bit easier to understand here. I'm just simply dividing the six divided by three, which is going to give me two. And then using the rules of exponents, I can say, all right, X cubed divided by X to the first is just going to give me a X squared. So therefore three X evenly divides into a 6x cubed a 2x squared times. The next thing we want to do in our long division algorithm is take this first term of our quotient and we need to multiply it by both terms of our divisor. And then the product of that, we're going to write right down below our dividend. 2x squared times a 3x is going to give me a 6x cubed. Quick little tip is if you did this correctly, if you did the division correctly, then when you rewrite the product, you should get the exact same term here, right? 6x cubed divided by 6x cubed. So therefore I did the multiplication and division correctly. 2x squared times a negative 4 is going to give me a negative eight X squared. Now, the next thing we can do is we could either just bring down the three X or the four, or we could use place values just to kind of understand and keep track of everything. Now, I'm not really a fan of using the place values in this case, but hopefully you see after this first example, why I put them in there and then what you can kind of do instead. So now I wrote the product right down below. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract these two lines. I'm going to subtract the dividend from my new product of my first term, my quotient times my divisor. It's very, very important that you use these brackets because we're not just applying the operations vertically. We're subtracting this whole bottom line from the top line. So I'm putting those parentheses out here and I'm going to put subtraction symbol on the outside. I always like to work one term at a time, six X cubed minus six X cubed, right? Well, again, that's a term subtracted by itself. That's just going to give me a six X cubed, which again, is just going to be zero. So we don't really need to write it there. Okay. Now moving on to the next one. And again, here comes one of the biggest mistakes that I see students make. What students will do here is they'll just take a negative eight X squared minus eight X squared. And they say, oh, that's going to be a negative 16 X squared. And guess what? From here, they go ahead and get the problem wrong. So what we need to make sure we understand is this is a negative eight X squared minus a negative eight X squared minus a negative is going to be a positive, right? So this is really a negative eight plus a positive eight, which is again, give me a zero X squared, which again, we don't need to write. Now this next example, I have a three X minus a zero X. Well, minusing zero guys is really nothing. So you can see how it just would have been faster just to bring down the three X, right? And the same thing here, negative four minus zero is again, just gonna be a minus four. So again, next time you might want to say, I'm just going to bring them down. I'm not going to use the place values, but I think it is really important to kind of recognize and understand how those place values can sometimes help us keep everything nice and tidy. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the long division algorithm all over again. So we're going to have our first term, our divisor, and we're going to now divide it into our new row over dividend. So three X, how many times does three X divide into a three X? Again, I don't need to write that down below here. Hopefully you recognize that's exactly the same. So therefore that's going to be a one time. Then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to multiply times both terms, of your divisor, whatever you get up here, you always got to make sure you multiply it by both terms, of your divisor. So one times three X is going to be a three X and a one times negative four is going to be a negative four. And again, hopefully you recognize these are the exact same expressions. So when I go ahead and subtract them, I now get a remainder of zero. So therefore my final answer here is going to be a two X squared 
plus one. That was the long division. And obviously I took my time explaining it. What would we do if we wanted to do this via synthetic division? So via synthetic division is going to be a little bit different because it's not really pure division, right? It's synthetic. So the first thing we need to understand when we're doing synthetic division is again, it's just a tool. So we need to be able to identify some values from this division property to be able to apply synthetic division. The first value is K. And the way that we're going to identify K is we're going to set our divisor equal to zero and then go and solve. Whatever my variable X equals, that is going to be my value K. So X equals four thirds. That is going to be my K, which I'm going to call now a four thirds. So then what are we going to do with our K? So what we're going to do with our K is we're going to put it on the outside here. And then what we're going to do is kind of do a inverted kind of a long division bar here. Now, the next thing we need to do for long division is we need to take the coefficients. Now, it's very important if you have any missing values that you use zero, right? Now, in this case, you can see we have three, two, one, and we don't have any missing variable, right? And this is technically like X to the zero. So we went all the way down to zero. So we're good here. But if you did have a missing variable or a missing, you know, exponent there, make sure you'd apply zero as the coefficient. But in this case, we're all good. So therefore, I'm just going to take a six, negative eight, three, and negative four. Now, the problem with synthetic division in this problem, you can see immediately off the bat, is we're going to be dealing with fractions. So I am going to be doing some work here down below um, just to make sure that we can get the correct coefficients. But the nice thing about synthetic division, since we're not dealing with x's and all this kind of stuff, we can actually move rather quickly. So the first thing we're always going to do is bring down the first term, which in this case is going to be a six. Now, what I need to do is multiply my diagonal. So six times a four thirds. And again, I'll just write that down here. So what is a six times a four thirds? Well, again, you can rewrite it like this three goes in six two times, and two times four is going to be an eight. So that's then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that next term and I'm going to put it over here. So when I write the product diagonal, then I write the product here below the next term. Then you're going to now add on your vertical. So negative eight plus eight is going to be a zero. Now, again, you multiply in your diagonal zero times a four thirds, which is going to be a zero. And then you add on your vertical three plus zero is going to be a three, three times four thirds. Now, again, let's write it out here. So a three times four thirds. Well, the threes again are going to divide out. That's going to give you one. One times four is going to be a positive four. And then you see we get a zero. So now we have an answer that six zero three zero. Well, that's not as simple as the answer we had over here, right? Two X squared plus one. So how do we go from this over to this? That's kind of the tricky thing about synthetic division. We did this problem rather quickly. Unfortunately, we didn't get the right answer, at least how it's being formatted. So a couple of things we need to understand. First of all, whenever we are using synthetic division and we have a coefficient of our variable X, what we need to do here is divide all of our terms by the value. We don't need to worry about this last one, as I'm going to explain in a second what that represents. So when I do that, I now get a two, a zero, and a one, and then I'll still have a zero. That looks a little bit closer. That looks like the coefficients and my constant of my answer. So how, again, do we still write this in that format? The way the synthetic division works is this answer actually represents first the remainder, the constant, the coefficient of my linear term, and the coefficient of my quadratic term. So again, we knew the remainder is zero. We knew that from long division, right? This polynomial evenly divides into the numerator. So therefore, that's why the remainder is zero. And then obviously, we have a constant of one, and then we do not have a, a linear term, right? That's why it has a coefficient of zero. And then we have 2x squared. So we get a 2x squared plus one. So hopefully you can see that synthetic division was way quicker, but it did take a little bit of understanding of exactly what we were doing and how to apply synthetic division to be able to get the same answer as long division. Now let's go and take a look at one more example when we have some place values to kind of see how that's going to change with long division and synthetic division. Okay. So now to set this one up in long division, we're basically going to do the same kind of format here. I'm going to take a negative X uh, minus one, which is my divisor. And then I'm going to put that outside here. And then on the inside now, notice I don't have an X cubed, right? Nor do I have an X. So you don't have to do this. I think a lot of times though, either you want to space it out or you can go ahead and use your place values. And we're going to have to do that in synthetic division as well too. But um, you don't have to do it in long division, but sometimes it is helpful just for kind of like accounting purposes, just to make sure that you have all of your terms all set and you kind of know where everything's going that you are subtracting. Now, again, let's go through our rules here. So I have negative X divides into X to the fourth. And again, sometimes it feels like it's kind of getting a little tricky here. Just take in X to the fourth, right? And divide it by negative X. Well, how many times does negative X go into X to the fourth? Well, that's going to be a negative X cubed times. And again, our whole point here is when I multiply this negative X cubed back, I better get a positive X to the fourth. Negative times a negative is a positive, right? Three plus a one equals four. So you can see I get an X to the fourth. Now I have a negative X cubed times negative one, which is going to be a positive X cubed. So again, you didn't need the place value, but again, like you got to understand your subtract zero from there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract my rows rather than putting zeros here. Like I did in the last example, I'm just going to bring them down, right? Cause you can just imagine these are all going to be zeros here. Like I did in the last example. So now let's go and subtract them. I better have the exact same X to the fourth minus X to the fourth, right? It's just going to be a zero X to the fourth. So I'm not going to write it. Then here I have zero X cubed minus an X cubed, right? Now leave me a negative X cubed. So we have negative X. How many times is negative X divided into negative X cubed? So let's again, write this out. So we have a negative X cubed. How many times do we divide a negative X into there? Well, the negatives now are going to divide out to give you a positive. So that's going to be a positive 
x squared. And again, take the x squared, you're gonna multiply it by a negative x, which is gonna give you a negative x cubed, right? And then you multiply the x squared times negative one, which is I'm going to give you a negative x squared. Now here, we gotta to remember to bring all these values down, right? So I'm gonna bring this down, so that'd be a positive three x squared. We can bring down the positive zero x, and we can bring down the negative four. So now we need to go ahead and subtract our rows again. Remember to put the negative here, so a negative minus a negative x cubed, that's gonna be positive. A negative x cubed plus x cubed, just give me zero x cubed. Here I have a three x squared minus a negative x squared, which is gonna give me a positive four x squared. Now in these case, I'm actually kind of run out of value here, so that's gonna be an x squared. So I'm actually gonna bring this down, just to give myself a little bit of room. So so now let's go ahead and do this all over again. So I have a negative x goes into 4x squared. So, right, so I have a 4x squared divided into a negative x. So that's going to give me a negative 4x. So that's going to be answer up here. And now what I need to do is go ahead and multiply this times everything. So a negative 4x times negative x, right, is going to be a positive 4x squared. And then a negative 4x times a negative 4 is going to be a positive 4x. So that'd be a positive 4x. Subtract your rows. You can bring this down. So that's going to be a plus a 0x. And you can bring down the negative 4. Subtract my rows here. That's going to go to a 0. 0 minus a 4x is going to be a negative 4x minus 4. We're again going to take this first term, divide into the first term. So negative x goes into negative 4x, how many times? A positive four times. Four times negative x is a negative four x. And then a four times negative one is a negative four. Notice these are exactly the same. So when I go ahead and subtract them, I'm gonna get zero, but here is now going to be my answer. So that's how we do with long division. You can see in a problem like this, long division might not be the ideal way. Like it took a very, very long time for us to do that. So let's go and see how synthetic division would look for a problem like this. Okay, so now to go ahead and look at the synthetic division. Again, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and set our k. So basically what we do is set my divisor. So that's gonna be negative x minus one. And I'm gonna set the equal to zero and then go ahead and solve. When we look at this, you you know, we notice that we don't have an x cube and we don't have an x. So a lot of times it's kind of helpful just to rewrite that numerator with all of your terms. And remember, if you don't have a term like as a coefficient, remember that number is going to be one. So therefore I can rewrite this as a one x to the fourth. Okay. That's going to be plus a zero x cubed, right? Because there's no zero, there's no x cubed. And that's going to be plus a three x squared plus a zero x and then minus four. So remember these coefficients and my constant are what I'm going to plug into my synthetic division kind of bar. So therefore I'll have a one, zero, three, zero and negative four. So now what I'm gonna do is apply the synthetic division algorithm, right? We're gonna take the first term, bring it down. That's the freebie, we love that one. Then we're gonna multiply on the diagonal, one times negative one, and then add it to the next column. So one times negative one is going to be a negative one. And then remember we add vertically. So zero plus negative one is going to be a negative one. Negative one times negative one is going to be a positive one. Three plus one is going to be a four. Four times negative four is a negative four. Zero plus negative four is a negative four. And negative four times negative one is going to be a positive four. And then that's gonna to add to give me a zero. Now remember, if you look at this, these are those are not the coefficients that we have here, right? So again, remember, we have that negative one, that coefficient. So then what I need to do now is divide all of these by a negative one. So therefore, that's going to give me now a negative one, positive one, negative four, positive four, and then we'll still have a remainder zero, right? Now, again, remember that is your remainder, constant, coefficient of your linear, coefficient of your quadratic, coefficient of your cubic. And hopefully you can see we're going to get the exact same answer as I write this in, a negative x cubed plus x squared minus four X plus four. So that was much, much faster than doing your long division. However, I think in this first example, I probably would have preferred to do long division than try to work with anything doing the synthetic division. But either way, guys, it's up to your choice. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you're still looking to learn more, then go ahead and check out my next video I have for you or go ahead and check out the playlist and resources I have for you down below. Cheers.